Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the pattern for the Blue Waves matching pillow for the baby blanket. So I realize on camera it looks really big, but it's really not. It's uh, 12 inches tall by 20 inches wide. Um, and it is a pillow, a little pillow case, so that it can come off the pillow and you can change it. So. Um, I will put a link in the description box for the the pillows that I'm using that I got off of Amazon. Um, let's see. So I do want to apologize for the air conditioner running in the background. It's super hot outside and I can't shut that off. And the one other note that I want to talk about before we get started is that the majority of this tutorial is going to be a repeat of the Afghan tutorial. And what I mean is, instead of going back over how you work the stitch pattern in the baby blanket tutorial, I make this little panel and um, I'm just going to insert that to tell you how to work the pattern. But now I'm going to tell you how to get your length. So, Okay, if you're making your pillowcase for a 12 or I'm sorry, 12 by 20 inch pillow. We're gonna start with a chain of 87 and then you're gonna follow the exact same pattern that's uh, that's in the next next part, the tutorial part. Okay, so if, um, if your pillow is any different size, you're gonna have to experiment with how long your chain needs to be. So the chain multiple for this pattern is any multiple of 17 plus two, okay? Um, you're going to need a six millimeter hook and go ahead and get scissors, needle to weave in your end, all of that stuff. And then for the yarn, I use one skein of, I'm trying to get it out just a second, one skein of each color. All of them are the same crafter secret big idea in the color Magnolia Way. And then the blue is called Splash, and the gray is called Graybeard, which the gray looks a lot darker on camera than it is in real life. Okay, um, so yeah, go ahead and start, if you're using the 12 by 20 pillow insert, if you're using a different size, you're going to have to experiment with the chain length. Um, but I'll have a link in the description box for the pillow insert that I'm using from Amazon. And uh, let's see, yeah. So go ahead and get your chain length done and then we're going to make the panel and go ahead and weave in all your ends and then I will show you how we uh, stitch the pillowcase together and do a little border. So whenever you're working your, your panel, right, you need to make sure that it completely goes around the pillow. So work your panel so long and then stop and then test it around your pillow. So for instance, I have... Let's see, I'm just gonna, and I didn't finish on the exact color difference. Um, meaning like I didn't go from the, the right color, like that should have been white right there. But that's okay, it's no big deal. So I have my blue, gray, white, gray color sequence. Once, twice, three times, four times, and then I went ahead and stopped and I held it together and put my, put my pillow in it and it was a nice snug fit, so I went ahead and stopped there. So go ahead and work your color up and then stop and wrap it around your pillow and hold your little seam and see how tight or loose it is on your pillow. Do you need to add more rows or take rows off? Um, yeah, and that's it. That's as simple as that, guys. Just work your panel until it fits around your, your pillow Weave in all your ends and come back and we are going to sew it together. All right, go ahead and get your chain length done, which should be chain 87, and then we'll start the pattern. Okay, so once you have your length of chain done, I've got a little sample here of 53, so it's 17 times three and then add two. All right, let's get started with row one. So we are gonna start by double crocheting into the fourth chain from our hook. So one, two, three, four, 
right there. Go right in there with a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet decrease two times. So to decrease, we yarn over, go into the very next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's the first half. Now we yarn over, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, oh excuse me, I was swallowing at the same time I was working, uh, yarn over, pull through two, so you have three loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So one more time, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, two loops, yarn over, go into that next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So there's your two double crochet decreases and we chain one. So the pattern repeat for row one starts with that chain one. So we're going to chain one and we're going to cluster into the next five chains. So the cluster is yarn over, go into your next chain, pull up a loop, pull that up just a little bit, about the height of a double. That was one, we're going to do it two more times. Yarn over, go into the same chain, pull up a loop, pull it up just a bit, one more, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, pull it up just a bit, and you should have seven loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and chain one to lock it down. And when you work that chain one, work it loosely, because if you do it too tight, you're not going to be able to work into it, which we have to do um, on the next row. I have a black dot on my finger, and it's a piece of uh, ink from writing patterns, and it's tr trying to get it off. Okay, so we're going to do that four more times. Yarn over into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through all seven of your loops, chain one to lock it down. Yarn over into the next chain, pull up a loop, one, two, three, make sure you got seven loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all seven, ah, all seven loops, chain one to lock it down. That chain one is so important, we cannot forget that chain one, okay? All right, so we need five, there's three, so we got two more clusters, one, two, three, seven loops, yarn over and pull through all seven of those loops, chain one, and into the next chain, one, two, three, seven loops, yarn over, Pull through all seven, chain one to lock it down. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. Good deal. So you can already see there's the peak of our little, of our ripple, right? Because with your ripple, you have peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. So we just did our peak, and now we're getting ready to work our valley. So the valley is six double crochet decreases. So I'm going to show you guys again. To decrease, we yarn over, go into the very next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So there's your decrease. So the six double crochet decrease is worked over the next 12 chains. So we've already got one decrease. I'm going to go ahead and get a little faster. Two, 
2 decrease. Three decrease. There's four. Five. And one more. is six. So let's stop and count. That is the end of the repeat for the row. So I want to make sure I got this right. We have one, two, three, four, five clusters. One, two, three, four, five, six decrease. So to start the pattern repeat, we chain one, five cluster, six decrease. Chain one, five cluster, six decrease. Okay, so we're gonna start that repeat. I'm gonna do it one more time on camera with you guys. And then I'll do the last one of mine off camera. All right, so to start the repeat, we chain one, cluster into the very next chain. One, two, I didn't pull that up very high. Three, yarn over, pull through all seven loops, chain one to lock it down. One, two, three, yarn over, pull through all seven loops, chain one to lock it down, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through all seven loops, chain one, one, two, and three. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, get in there. Chain one, how many is that? One, two, three, four, one more. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. One, two, three, seven loops. Yarn over, pull through all seven, chain one to lock it down. That is one, two, three, four, five clusters, and now we work our six decrease. One, two, three. four, five, and six. So you can see we have our chain one, peak, and valley. Chain one, peak, and valley. So the pattern repeat one more time is chain one, five clusters, six decrease. And do not forget the chain one at the end of your clusters to, sh to uh, lock down that cluster stitch, okay? So chain one, five clusters, six decrease. Again, chain one, five clusters, six decrease. You repeat that all the way across your chain until you get to the last uh, uh, six chains. I'm sorry, I had to. My pattern is already typed up and ready to go, and so I have to turn my head to look at my computer. So <laughs> that's why I kind of sound funny when I turn. Um, so yeah, you repeat that pattern repeat for the row until the last six chains, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pause here, get my work done, and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I have repeated that all the way across my chain, my little sample piece here, and I have my five clusters and then six chains left. So to end row one, we are just going to work a double or three double crochet decrease over the last six chains.
one, two, and into the last two chains with the last decrease for three. And that is the end of row one. Okay, so row two is the first row of our two row repeat. So we're going to chain one and turn and row two is the easiest row. All we are going to do is single crochet into that very first decrease and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. That includes the chains too. So work into your three decrease and then turn and look. See the top of all of your stitches? You have to make sure you get into the top of each chain and, to each, and into each cluster. So if you look, you can see where all of those legs, remember the seven uh, loops that we pulled through? All of those legs right there, where they come together, that's the top of the stitch. So go into there with a single. And then if you look, right next to it is the chain one. So get in there and single crochet. Look at where all your legs come together. This, is, this row is why I said not to work those chain ones very tight. Get in there. You can tell mine might be a little too tight. <laughs> My camera is wanting to just randomly go in and out of focus, and I think it's because some sort of a filter must have been turned on. So I turned off the filter to see if that helps. Okay, so we're going to single crochet into each cluster and into each chain one. That cluster, and then we got that, what is that, is that the first, nope, that's the chain one. So we got this chain one right here. Okay, and now we are to our six clusters, so single crochet into each of those. Nice. I'm just going to cut that. This is just my little sample piece, so I'm not too concerned about it, but if that was the actual if that was my actual baby blanket, I would pull out some single crochets, cut that off, tie it uh, back together with two long tails, and then weave the tails in through the work. Okay. All right, so that is all you are gonna do for row two. Single crochet all the way across, making sure you're getting into each and every stitch. And if you have a hard time, just turn your work and look at the top of those stitches. I'm trying to get my shadow off of there and make sure you get into every one of those all the way across, all right? And like I said, this is the first row of our two row repeat. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and get mine done off camera and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my row. I've got one stitch to work into and then that double crochet right there and then like I said in the intro of the video throughout this entire pattern we do not work into our chain threes okay so that is not going to be worked into so that is the end of row two and you can see this is what your piece should be looking like all right so to move on to row three and the second row of our two row repeat, we chain three and turn. We are going to skip that very first single crochet right there and double crochet into the next single. And then we're gonna work two double crochet decrease so once again, that's yarn over, go into the next single crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, go into that next single crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, two uh, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. One more time. Okay. All right, so we worked our two decrease. Now we're gonna start the pattern repeat for row three. And once again, that starts with a chain one and we're going to work five clusters. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, one. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, two. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop for three. Seven loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yarn over, pull through all seven, chain one. That was one, we need five. So here is, I'm gonna go a little faster. Two. Three. four, chain one and five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we work our six decrease. And that is the repeat for row three. Which I mean, it's pretty much the same as row one. The only difference is we're working into the single crochets instead of the chains. So I think you guys should have it. What is that? Three. Four. Five. Right? Let's double check. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, I already yarned over. And the last decrease for six. And there you go. So again, the pattern repeat is chain one, five clusters, six decrease. Chain one, five clusters, six decrease. You repeat that all the way across your work. And once again, you're gonna end on uh, the five, the five, um, spit it out, <laughs> clusters and then you're gonna have six single crochet left, okay, all right? So go ahead and repeat your work across and I will meet you when I get to my last. Okay, so I recre <laughs> recreated, repeated my work all across and I ended with the one, two, three, four, five clusters. Make sure you chain one to lock down that last cluster and I have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet left. So to end row three, we decrease over the last six single crochet. So double crochet decrease three times. I, f I should not have said what I said, I'm sorry. It's decrease over uh, three double crochet decrease over the last six single crochet. And that is the end of our second row repeat and the end of row three. So. The row repeats are row two and three, two and three, two and three. That's the only two rows you repeat throughout the entire pattern. The single crochet row and the cluster row. So I want to talk to you guys about the color sequence. I'll pull up my little piece here. Actually, I'm going to pause and pull back my camera so I can show, so I can show you everything that I'm working with. Okay, now I feel like you guys can see everything that I've got. So here are rows, well, the beginning chain, row one, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. repeated throughout, the, throughout my uh, baby blanket. Now, the part that I wanted to show you guys and I wanna kinda of put a bunch of emphasis on is because if you notice, you notice how the gray rows are a tad bit shorter than the white and the blue rows? The reason being is because they the gray row is single crochet row, 
cluster row, single crochet row. So it's row uh, two, three, two, where the white and the blue are row three, two, three. And the reason um, that makes them a little bit taller is because the clusters and the decrease are a little taller than just the single crochet rows. So these two have two cluster rows where the gray only has one cluster. So that's how the, clus the, the gray is a little shorter than the, um, the white and the blue, which kind of gives it that look to where, you know, the, um, the ripple kind of is just a little smaller with the gray. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you understand, right? Clear as mud. <laughs> I hope I'm not confusing you guys. But anyway, you can do this color or uh, this afghan in any color sequence you want. I just like to have that gray to offset the white, and it just gives it a little extra, a little extra something instead of just blue and white stripes, right? Blue and white white ripples. Just that that gray just offsets that a little bit. So, it, you know, if you wanted to make this for a little girl, you could do um, pink, and then maybe a lighter gray and white. Or, you know, whatever colors you guys want to do. I don't, I don't want to tell you what to do or give you any ideas because <laughs> I want you to use your own imagination and your own creativity and come up with a beautiful color sequence. But anyway, so the color sequence, we start with our blue. And then we go gray, white, gray, blue. Gray, white, gray, blue. So that is my color sequence. And then... I okay, so once you have your pillow cover completely crocheted all the ends weaved in ready to go what I want you to do is lay your piece down so that the stitches from row one are facing up and then we're gonna bring the top of our work down you adjust you guys right there and what we're gonna do is slip stitch or whip stitch you guys can do it however you want to but I am going to bring these two ends together and I'm going to slip stitch, stitch for stitch all along this bottom all the way to the end. So let me get a slip knot on my hook, still using my six millimeter. So I'm going to find that very first chain, which is a little hard to see because I've already weaved in my end. Go right through there, and then I'm going to go through the very first single crochet, just the, the loop that's towards our work. So this loop right here, it's the only one we're going to work through. And that's regardless if you're slip stitching or whip stitching it closed. All right, so I'm just gonna pull through and slip stitch. All right, now all I'm gonna do is slip stitch all the way across my work, stitch for stitch. This loop, I realize I started this on the wrong side. That's all right. Slip stitch here and here. All right, so you guys can go ahead and work this all the way across and I will come back as soon as I get mine done. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have come to the end. I've slip stitched this all together. I think I'm gonna actually come out right, which just shocks me. I thought for sure I'd be off a stitch or two Actually, I think I am off one. No, I'm not. Right there's the very next single. Yes, I am. I'm off by one. That's all right. All right, into this last single crochet and into the top. Well, I'm gonna go into that next chain right there. We're gonna slip stitch. Okay, so we fully close the long side. Now we're gonna rotate and fully close <coughs> pardon me, uh, down this short side. So to make that a nice sharp turn, I'm gonna chain two 
and then come back down and all I'm going to do is evenly space out slip stitches down this side. Nice and loose. Mm, where can I get in? Just evenly space them out. Work two around a one area if you need to. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way down this side. All right, I will be right back. Alrighty, so I am coming to the end. I've got this little section right here, but I wanted to come back and show you guys to make sure your piece is all nice and straight and not, you know, bunched up like this down the, down the end. Make sure it's nice and flat before we fully close off this last panel, last piece. So I'm going to keep working my slip stitches. Like I said, nothing fancy. I'm just going in there and slip stitching. One more time. Getting close. I'm going to make sure that's nice and straight, not bunched up. Okay, so now I am to that end, right on the, uh, the very last, the last little space that I could get into. I'm going to go one more time, chain one, pull up a loop, and we can cut. Okay, now I'll, 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 I will weave in that end later. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this out so that all of my seams are to the inside. I'll weave in that tail later also. Okay. So now I want that seam that I slip stitched <laughs> that I messed up my colors. Um, I want that to be to the top of, or top or bottom of my pillow, one of the two. Okay, so now that we have got that done, we are going to work the border, cat hair, the border around the edge. So I'm going to maneuver this around so that that lays nice and pretty. That is so cool. I am happy, happy, happy with that. Okay, um, I am, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my blue back. Oh no, where's my hook? Oh, there it is. Okay, get a slip knot on your hook, and again, plenty of tail to weave in. And I am going to attach closer to the bottom. And what I'm looking for, I'll just go right here, right at that seam. I'm looking for the single crochet row. So this gray is a single crochet. And I am going to attach right into that end single crochet with a slip stitch and then go ahead and chain one, pull that chain tight, uh, that uh, tail tight. And we're gonna go right back in there with a single crochet. Ah. Chain three. Go right back in there again with two double crochet. And now jump to that next single crochet row and go right into that end single crochet with a single chain three. Go right back around there again with two double crochet. And that is what we're gonna repeat all the way around. Go to that next single crochet row Go right into the side of that single, single crochet, chain three, go right back in there with two double. All right, find your next single crochet row right here. We're going to go right into the top of that very last one with a single, chain three, and go right back in there again with two double.
Okay, so I'm going to let you guys f repeat that all the way around, and I will come back when we are to the last row of single crochet before we started. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, so I repeated that around, and I actually went ahead and worked to that into that last uh, single crochet row right there. So I'm just going to bring my work down, and I, let's see, I'm going to go right into the base of this double. I'm just going to go right in there with a slip stitch, chain one, pull up a loop, and cut. Okay. So now our pillow cover is done. I am going to get in here and give it a good pull. Get these stitches to let loose a little. And then I'm going to insert my pillow. All right. Oh, it's perfect. Slides right in there. I'm just positioning the corners into the corner of the pillow cover. Get in there. And there. Okay. Oh, it looks awesome. Okay. I'm gonna set this up and I'll pull you guys back to see the pillow. <laughs> oh, it looks great. I am super happy with that. Yay! <laughs> I feel like I'm a little dark. There we go. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I'm super happy with it. Um, I'm going to weave in my cameras, or my cameras, weave in my ends off camera. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. The, the matching blanket and the little baby cardigan is going to be in the, the tutorial. The link for those tutorials will be in the description box. So look down there and you can find the patterns for a matching little cardigan and a baby blanket for this. Okay, well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. <clears throat> Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss what's next. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.